Thank you, Carol, for um, that introduction. So at our webinar last Wednesday that we referenced, my colleagues Celeste and Colin gave a brief overview of the booklets covering putting beneficiaries at the heart of funding and relationship-based funding. So the pressure is on, I'm afraid, as they did such a good job. And so today I'm going to do my very best to provide an overview of the both booklets, as Carol said, about being a flexible funder and a strategic funder. At the Trust, when we talk about flexible funding, we describe it as striking a balance between achieving the best outcomes for beneficiaries and setting out the best approach to making this happen. Our approach as a flexible funder was certainly put to the test recently during COVID-19, like many others. We needed to act quickly whilst ensuring the outcomes for people with dementia, for unpaid carers and for young people were maximised. The flexible funding booklet outlines some key steps identified by the Trust as key to being or becoming a flexible funder. First, it's about developing funding programmes. The principles of flexible funding such as trust, adapting to change and targeting specific areas of work are woven through the framework of the Life Changes Trust. These principles are used when it comes to developing specific programmes. The booklet cites many examples of this, including our work with Dementia Friendly Communities, the recent Caring for the Carer programme and the Keep Well Fund. Thinking about accessible application and assessment, pro pro um, assessment processes, sorry, Flexibility applies to many areas of funding by the Trust, but what we would say our greatest impact has been is with our small grants. For example, Caring for the Carer and My Choice, My Future has straightforward application routes with options for applicants to apply, for example, online, by telephone, and in some cases, using video. We then invited our beneficiaries to be the decision makers for some of the grants providing support and in some cases being a critical friend when needed, demonstrating that co-production really does work and the benefits reach, reach way beyond the funding itself. Having a robust due diligence process in place means the Trust is able to look at ways of being more flexible for certain programmes and for grants. The due diligence process has obviously had to be adapted due to the pandemic, but overall the Trust has always made sure that the level of due diligence is responsive to the particular programmes it is aimed at. Funding staff apply flexibility in their own approach to grant management, which allows discussions around budget underspends, timelines for projects and changes to project delivery. This approach works because we place importance in developing good relationships between funding staff and the organisations that we fund. Flexibility and project delivery outcomes from the Trust, having faith in the ability of awardees to complete the work they set out to do. The delivery of a project is initially stipulated on the application form and agreed upon as part of a funding award. However, what we have faced over the last two years has meant we have had to factor in additional flexibility around project plans, meaning the route to achieving objectives and some outcomes may change over the lifetime of the grant. You will hear more about this from Julie at Dementia Friendly Festive a bit later on when she chats to Colin. Our approach to grant monitoring is flexible and it's just as important to find ways to best support those participating in projects as it is to ensuring that the best evidence is in place to shine a light on the work. The flexible funding booklet ends with a list of top 10 tips, which I am not going to read out, safe to say, but um, if you don't have time to read the whole booklet, it is only 16 pages, so it shouldn't be much of a problem. Then the top tips will certainly give you what you need to build on what you're already doing or to get started on something new. And so to strategic funding. Regardless of the size and the income of a funder, a well thought out strategy is necessary so that every penny has a purpose that brings benefit. So, and often this will be something that a lot of you on the call will know about already. But a simple strategy should ask, what are the overall aims? Which organisations or types of organisations it is that you want to fund? How much money do you want to give out? How long, what are the timelines for the funding and grant making? Does the work that you're being asked to fund fit with your stated aims as a funder? And how will you monitor progress and evaluate the impact once the funding has been awarded? 
The strategic funding booklet highlights the core elements of being a strategic funder based on what we've experienced as a trust. Identifying a role as a highly strategic funder, having a clear funding approach, our ability to fund individuals, and funding at a local and regional level, as well as nationally. We illustrate the importance of evidence and evaluation in our work and give examples of the impact this has had and set out the key benefits of being a highly strategic funder. What can be learned by our approach is that it's more than getting the money out there, but it's about having the ability to analyse the landscape and know about your beneficiaries. It's about thinking beyond traditional approaches and being comfortable about taking risks. It's multi-layered and it's, more, it's about more than simply funding. It's about evidence and it's about influence too. And it's about being prepared to be part of the long game. That it's about making a difference over time whilst accepting there will be bumps in the road. So resilience and patience is really important and a willingness to challenge the status quo with a solid evidence base to support this. Having the right staff in place to deliver on your strategy is critical too. Not always poaching them maybe from another organisation. And this is staff who believe in its aims and the outcomes that the strategy sets out to achieve. As we have for flexible funding, we have drawn together a series of top tips. And as I still have a few more minutes, I will quickly go over these. Make sure that the board and the staff of the organisation have a shared understanding in respect of the strategy and revisit it regularly. Build the strategy around what your beneficiaries say is important to them and keep the dialogue going. In the early days of the trust, senior staff travelled across the country to talk to people about the trust and to hear what mattered to them and what they wanted to see change. Have a long-term vision that paints a picture of what you wish to achieve and fund against that strategy. Commit to longer term funding relationships and explore collaborations with other funders where appropriate. You will hear a bit more about this um, when Colm and Nick have a chat a bit later on. Recruit staff who are genuinely committed to your cause as demonstrated through the application and interview process. And as Neil has already said, it might mean borrowing from other funders. Recruit programme directors who understand the context the programme operates in and who are willing to learn more. Be driven by the needs of beneficiaries first and foremost and prioritise relationships with them while being aware of other agendas that complement your work. Our work with people with dementia, with unpaid carers and with young people with care experience has always been front and centre to our approach and woven through all of the work that we have undertaken. This has not only been important, but has been a real privilege for the staff at the Life Changes Trust. Consider funding at, a at an individual or local level, it is, can also be highly strategic. We have some fantastic outcomes from this. And I can't stress the importance of evaluation enough and use the evidence for shared learning and influencing activities. This has been so refreshing for me um, when I come into the trust as it's not something that I had experienced in the past. And across both programmes, it was pretty unique until the trust entered that um, landscape and has given us some really pretty major results. Allow the strategy to be flexible when necessary with advantage to beneficiaries, the primary consideration. And lastly, um, tip number 10, from the outset, think ahead of leaving a legacy of strong relationships, influence and funding that builds that that build that can build upon creating something even greater in time. Drawing in the last point, the ongoing relationships that the trust has established now means we are handing over the baton to an extensive range of legacy partners who will carry the trust's aims, priorities, and values beyond its lifetime. We know that this will not work. Or look identical to what we have done at the Trust, but will build upon the Trust work for many years to come. And just as a wee add-on, we plan on hosting events to shine a light on our legacy and formally announce legacy partners for both programmes. The legacy event for younger people with care experience takes place online on the 16th of February, and for our dementia programme, it is the 24th of February. So save the date, and look out for details on our social media and e-bulletins. I know that the YPC programme have already given some kind of tasters on social media already. 
We would love to see as many people as possible join us as we reflect over the last nine years and celebrate what comes next um, in the next phase.